the United States of America. We, like everyone in the world, grew up to images of this so-called great nation as it was sold to us. From their movies, music, fashion, right down to their morals and values, which we have adapted or adopted as our own. We know more about this country than people in the country know about their own country. Or at least that's how it feels like most of the time. Your head is filled with names of their cities, celebrities, sportsmen and women, even their presidents and politicians, yet any random American can't tell you your president's name or even your country's capital city to save their own life. So finally, after 35 years of consuming so much about this country, I got my visa and jumped in, in an airline and off I went to the USA. This was a planned trip with my brother and sister-in-law. I arrived in North Carolina, Burlington and spent a day and night. Following morning, we would drive all the way to Washington, D.C., where we spent three days and two nights. Then after that, we drove further up to Atlantic City, where we spent a day and a night, then drove to New York City, which was the highlight, I suppose, of the whole trip. We spent three nights and four days then started driving back down again um, towards Philadelphia, where we made a stop at New Jersey Jackson over at Six Flags since I wanted to do a theme park so bad. We spent the day there and only a night in Philadelphia. From Philly, we drove back to North Carolina, but passing through Greensboro, Virginia. Following day, I'd catch my flight back to the Republic of South Africa. So I'm going to be speaking more from a South African's perspective and giving you my top 10 interesting or shocking differences. Let's get it. So the first one would be the wrong side of the road. So I've lived abroad before in a country where you drive on the right instead of the left lane, but I never drove while leaving that country. And it was before I even drove in my own country, to be honest. So this was the first time that I actually had to drive, get on the road, be behind the wheel and drive on the right. Um, and boy, was a tricky at first. Even when my brother was driving, I had to catch myself a few times from yelling out, watch, because I thought we were about to get in an accident or something. So that was the first thing. Second thing, number two, everything is freaking expensive. I'm not sure if this is just inflation or not, but everything is freaking expensive. So if you go there, make sure your wallet is thicker than a sumo wrestler. My concern started when I touched down and we went to buy lunch. This place was not fancy at all, right? Um, it was more like a roadside burger joint and prices ranged around $12 to $22 for a meal you'd get for maybe around 120 to 160 rand at spur which is more high-end compared to this place we went to, right? At this point, I'm doing the conversion in my head, and I'm like, nah, fam. It just got worse from there. Uh, for example, a six-pack of Corona, $12 at retail store uh, in North Carolina, which is more about 200 rand. Normal Coke, just a normal Coke that you'd buy for 12 rand in South Africa, is typically three dollars which is above 50 rand in the u.s so be prepared to leave your rands behind the dollar is just too powerful compared to the rand number three price tags so whenever we went out i noticed that americans don't include um tax or vat on the listed prices in store so you will take an item from the shelf and when you run it up at the register, the price goes up. So the tax is a price to you when you pay. For each item, unlike home where the price you see on the shelf, it is exactly what your card will be charged for or the amount you'll spend at the register. Number four, the speed limit. We obviously did a lot of driving and the speed limit over there needs to be adjusted uh, in my view. I remember driving for two hours at one point when we were driving back actually from philadelphia and the highest speed limit that i could do was 65 miles an hour which is basically around 100 kilometers an hour so you can imagine for two hours you couldn't surpass 100 kilometers an hour so that was very frustrating for me you need to understand in south africa the speed limit is more of a reference thing um, it is low you're supposed to get in trouble for it 
but you don't. We have a different type of relationship with our law enforcement over here. South Africans know what I'm talking about. So we, we drive more freely. You can drive above the speed limit without worrying that you'll spend a night in jail or have your license suspended or all kinds of things that happen out there in the US. So they they more strict and they strict more to their speed limits, right? So um, in South Africa, I'd probably... I would have been probably doing 140, 100, and, okay, maybe not 140, but 120, 30 um, kilometers an hour. Number five, minority. When watching American media, we see a lot of black people, especially in music videos and celebrity gossip blogs or vlogs, etc., etc., that you forget that black people are actually a minority. When they say minority, they're referring to the numbers of black people that live over there whether it being black americans or just um, any kind of black people that immigrated to the u.s right um, it's only when you get there that you realize that minority is talking about the number and you realize this because it's just it's very apparent when you're in the country right and the thing is because you can watch a hip-hop video and just see black people or lover or when you go to tiktok or instagram you see a lot of black people gathered in groups um you forget that they are a minority right until you get there and you see one black person out of every hundred white people right you're just driving through town walking through a mall or wherever you are and it's just a lot of white people and every now and again you'll catch a black face and then you go wow you know and it, it, it's not something that maybe you notice immediately but i'd say i started noticing it after two or three days i was like man where are, where are all these black people that i always see um in the media in american media right so it was very weird and so real to realize that oh yeah black people are a minority over there right so that's another thing number six was parking do not ever drive in washington dc or new york city in fact at this point i'll assume um that in any big metro in the u.s it's the same you will spend your entire day cycling for parking it is an, an absolute nightmare and again it's not that there are no spaces um, at the side of the road there are plenty of them but they have all these signs prohibiting you from parking for valid or sometimes kind of not the most impressive reasons um, it's just a nightmare to to find parking in in the metros over there so I'll suggest if you ever go, just leave your car at the Airbnb or hotel or wherever you at. Catch a bus, train or Uber, as expensive as it is. Or they have lift um, over there. Just catch a lift um, to drop you off at your destination. Trust me, that will work way better than trying to drive to a place. And then you end up spending hours circling and circling just trying to find parking. Okay, number seven was bricks yes bricks i'm not sure what's with american and what's with their beef with bricks or building houses with bricks but the majority of their houses uh, including even estates and mansions are built with wood and they live in fancy tree houses basically so i suppose there are some advantages to it i i just saw a bunch of disadvantages for example when you're walking on wood it creaks um it has small spaces in between or gaps where if the guy downstairs is smoking um the smoke comes right up to your to your apartment it's highly uh, inflammable as you, you'd know and wood is a cheaper material than bricks but for example it's expensive to buy a house or an apartment over there maybe someone can comment on the on the comments below just explaining to me why they build in wood because I, I don't get it i don't get it at all which is another thing which makes which contributes towards i think at least contributes towards the parking nightmare is because every street has like a million um of those lit fire hydrants so you cannot park in front of them so literally you'll be driving around looking for parking and you'll be seeing this spaces you get excited like oh there's a space and as soon as you get close it's a fire hydrant there and as soon as you see it you know you cannot park there so that sucks 
Number eight, the clubs. Okay, so I didn't go to any clubs in North Carolina, nor did I go into any clubs in Virginia or Philly or Atlantic City. I went to a club in New York. So apparently the stuff we see in movies of it being hard to get in a club is true, especially for dudes. If you want to get, um, if you want to go out, have your ID with you, make sure whether you're a woman or a dude on this one, make sure you have your ID with you. Because here in South Africa, we used to just showing up to a club, no ID. They look at you and they just make us assumption, I guess, that you're old enough and they let you in over there. First thing they do is, can I see your ID? You could be 50 years old with gray hair, the dude would look at you dead in your eyes and go, can I please have your ID? So I'm not sure if it's an age thing or something else, but they're very strict with seeing identification before they let you in the club. Uh, and most clubs, you will need to book a table to get in. So you'll need to spend to book a table or buy bottles to get in, especially if you're a dude. So just do your due diligence, do your research. Um, I went to a club in New York called Nebula, which was awesome. And the reason I ended up going to the club because it was one of the clubs that allow you to buy an online ticket on their site. So if you can find a club that does that, because that, then that guarantees you that you'll go in the club. Um, the ticket that I got for Nebula for that night was $30. Yep, $30, which is about close to 600 rand. Uh, yeah, that's just entrance. That's not VIP. That's not. That's just to go in without a table or anything. Stand by the bar, and so yeah. So that's what I mean when I say the U.S. is expensive, especially New York. New York is actually rated, I believe, as the most expensive city in the world. So you can imagine it was just six hundred rand, thirty dollars just to get in the club. A drink, a single drink like Corona was fifteen dollars, um, which is above 250 rand for one drink which is insane right so yeah be prepared to spend a lot of money number nine was the cars as far as i know in sa right now we only have uh one muscle car which is the mustang i'm not sure why they're not importing or we, uh, why we're not importing or they don't export more muscle cars out here i mean south africans got guap so we can afford them um but they don't so the only muscle car you see around south africa is just the ford mustang um so i was shocked when i got there at the number of different muscle cars that they have from different car brands and not just the muscle cars like i saw this six wheel jeep um i don't think i've seen it in south africa before um and i was like dang wh why don't we have that in south africa and we have jeep here in south africa so besides that it's just a lot of um cars brands that we know but like models um they don't that they don't release to south africa or south africa doesn't uh, either allow them to export or they don't um, export. I'm not sure what's the deal with that, but it's just certain Toyotas, Nissan, Mazdas um, that I'd never seen in South Africa before, and that look very dope. So if you if you're a petrol head, if you enjoy cars, if you love cars, um, you are going to you're going to be amazed. You're gonna have a great time. Uh, you're gonna feast your eyes on just a lot of different um, cars. I enjoyed that, you know. And number ten, the food. The thing about America is because it's made out of so many different cultures, right? Uh, so many tribes, cultures, people, immig immigrants, basically. It makes their food way more interesting. So I will say that I had a great time. We ate at a lot of buffet places. Um, we went to a soul food buffet, we went to a Japanese buffet, um, we went to a Caribbean Caribbean's buffet. Uh, so we did a lot of buffet places and I just had, I had a great time. I definitely gained some weight when I came back um, home. That's my top 10 that I can think of about right now. So yeah, there's probably more that I'm forgetting. So maybe I'll make another video. But the good thing is because we have seen so much of the USA, there isn't a lot that will surprise you when you get there. It's just nice to experience the country. 
um, in person to be finally there in the flesh at Times Square and taking pictures in front of the White House, eating the famous chili cheesesteak in Philadelphia and going to comedy shows in Atlantic City in an Atlantic City casino was all amazing. So yeah, um, I had a great time out there. Uh, shout out to my brother and sister-in-law. Um, they they had they offered great hospitality for me. Um, I enjoyed it. This is Music Amp signing out. Peace. <laughs>